Welcome back to the lab folks. So I got a package in from DHL and it is from PCBWay. So this must be the boards for our little display module. And we're going to build one of those up quickly. And we're going to, um, going to set up a, a minimum pickaxe arrangement um, to run it. So we'll do a couple other things first, but uh, the idea is to take you through what you have to do to get a pickaxe up and running. And we're going to do that with the help of these wonderful boards from BCB Way, and they're sponsoring this video. So, uh, you know, thank them by going and getting some boards from them. And here they are. They look nice. They look nice. Okay. Let's see. I had to create the pattern for this one. I didn't have a pattern for this, but I'm always worried that I don't get these right. But it looks good. Now I just got to worry that I made the circuit right. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go build this up on the uh, bench over there. Then I'll get right into the minimum requirements to set yourself up uh, with a pickaxe development environment. All right, we've got the, the new module is all set up here. You can see here it's uh, it's much more compact than the one we, we built this way. Far more usable uh, for prototyping because of that compactness. And also it's got some mounting holes in here so you could actually build it right into a project. And uh, I had mentioned in the, the last video uh, on this that uh, we're going to put the capacitor right in between the legs of the socket there so that we get it closer to the ground, which is on pin four, and VCC, which is up here on this pin here, so we can get it directly in across them, uh, which is usually good practice if you can do it. And you can see how that fits in there nicely. And we're going to put the Max 7219 in there. And we're going to keep that aside for our um, little pickaxe when we build it up. So what do you need for running a pickaxe? Good question. So what you need, you need a programming cable. So that's called the AXE072. This is the USB download cable. They have a, an older AXE026, which goes into a serial port. But uh, serial port is not really supported that much anymore on new computers. So I think the best way to go would be with the, the USB cable. It'll work with uh, any of the operating systems going back to, well, anything that uh, the, the Pickaxe software is compatible with. And it's just a, it's just a little cable like this. It's based on a, an FTDI chip. And it's recognized by Windows 10 and Windows 11 immediately. You don't have to download any software or anything like that. You just plug it in and go. For older versions like Windows 7, if you still got that knocking around, they've got uh, a driver for that uh, up on the Pickaxe website. And so you need one of these, and then you need some way of getting the signals out of this into your Pickaxe. The best way to do that is with this. This is a little board. It's called uh, it's called the AXZ029. And what this little board does is it takes the tip ring and sleeve connector from the end of the cable like that and then brings it out breaks it out to these pins at the back here which can then plug directly into a breadboard like so and then you can wire that up to your pickaxe and let me show you the circuit diagram on this thing here because you can build this yourself so this here is the basic programming circuit for pickaxe and that's what's implemented on this little board here so you could implement that yourself if you wish to. So uh, the tip goes to ground, the ring goes into resistor network here, to the serial in to the pickaxe chip, and the sleeve comes out and goes to the serial out. So that goes back up to the computer. So all you'd really need is, is some sort of uh, 1 8 inch tip ring and sleeve. And I, I use these, these are the same ones that um, pickaxe people use in their little board here. I just got a, a number of these things. I use these a lot. And so what you would do is you would you would either use a little bit of breadboard or wire it up directly. 
I mean, it, it, so the 10K resistor goes between pins two and three and four and five. These are these pins here. So this is two, three, four, and five, like that. So you can put the 10K resistor right across those and then bring out the 22K resistor from pins two and three, which are these ones here, bring them out and uh, make up a cable that way. Or you could just mount this directly to a breadboard. So these pins are generally long enough to fit into a breadboard. They're not great, but they're generally long enough that you could plug that in like that. The only problem is this part here, this round part sticks up a little bit. So it might be difficult to get that one pin in place. But in my experience, it, it, it generally goes in. Or like I say, you could build it up onto a little bit of a board, but that's basically all you need along with the programming cable. Now on the computer, you need to download their software. So you, you go to their website, I'll leave a, a link to it down there and I'll show you that in a minute on one of my computers. You download the software and then you're basically ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up, I'm going to set this up here. with a Pickaxe 20 m 2 This is my favorite chip. I also like the 14 and the, and the 8 and I, you know, some of the other ones I've used as well, but this is generally my go-to chip. So here's the serial out, here's the serial in, and here's ground. So if you look at these, these uh, pins here, the serial out will go to pin 2, serial in goes to pin 19, and of course the 0 volts goes to 0 volts or ground. So uh, here's a, a depiction of that with this particular chip, right? Okay, so this is basically what we're going to set up and then we'll connect this up to it. And we're going to download the software and I'll show you that in real time. And hopefully we've got this to come up at ABC and then count up to 255 like it did before. Hopefully it works. <laughs> Okay, so uh, let me let me build all that up on here. One thing I should mention that I forgot to is you need some sort of power supply. So a pickaxe recommend anything from about 4.5 volts up to 5 volts. So you could use something like this if you wanted with three cells in a battery holder. And you can use one of those 9 volt battery snaps to take the power off here into there. In fact, um, pickaxe in, in a lot of their kits sell exactly that. I mean, that's that's their their go-to way uh, but you know if you have a power supply available to you you can bring down five volts here i've got this little doohickey so it just takes a, an input in here of anything over seven and a half volts and gives me a five volts out so that's my my power supply okay so this is the layout here i've got the axe 029 here and i've attached up the appropriate pins the appropriate pins on the pickaxe 20 m2 and what I've done here, uh, what I'm going to initially do is I'm going to blink an LED with it once I get the software all loaded up, the cable attached. Uh, we just download a simple little program to blink, it, blink an LED. So that, I've just attached that onto, so that's attached like this. We've got it on pin 11 of the pickaxe, uh, which is port B and it's bit 7. And it comes down here through a, I think I've got a 4.7K ohm resistor on there down the ground. But that's what will blink. Let me see if I can get OBS started up on this little laptop here. And we'll set it up with the pickaxe software. And then attach our programming cable and go from there. And we want this one here, pickaxe editor 6.2.0.0. Uh, they have other software here you're free to play around with. We'll download this one. Okay, so it's that easy. Now we have to actually uh, close this down in order to plug the cable in because this, this cable will come up as a COM port. So let's get uh, the device manager up here, see what happens when we plug this in here. So you can immediately see that the ports have come up here and in there we have, so that's our pickaxe cable, is, is COM4. And now if we restart 
the pickaxe program editor. Let's get this into the taskbar. Okay, it finds the COM port there, COM4 AX027 pickaxe USB. So that's that. Now we are here. Let's, uh, let's hook this up. Let's put some power on it. Plug this in here. And let's write that little program. Label main. Put in high B7. That'll turn on B7. Then pause for half a second. Low B7. Seven. Pause for half a second again, and then we'll go back to main and do it all over again. Okay, we should be ready to download this now. So all we have to do is then is press the program button, and if we've done everything correctly, so you set the pickaxe is it's already set to pickaxe twenty M two. So you have to do have to set your device there, and if you go down to the drop down menu, they're all come up there, and uh, we hit program and see what happens. There we go. We got our light blinking. This is what I like about this particular development environment uh, using the pickaxes. If I, if I want to make a change, let's say here I want it on only 10% of the time and just go up here. I make the changes that easily and then I download it. I know that uh, the other environment is kind of similar in, in ways of getting this uh, deep rather than OP and uh, the output is slightly complicated over the years. So now we have it here 10% on, 90% off. Let's go find that program for this. And uh, we'll hook this up and download the program to it and see if our little module works. So I've got these little cables on. These are DuPont male to DuPont female. And what I'll do sometimes when, when things have to go into a breadboard together, I'll just tape them up like that so that they fit in like a single plug. So let's, uh, let's get all this ready. And let's uh, download this program. Oh, there it is. It's working exactly as it was before. So that's nice. It's a great little module. These will come in handy in, in experimenting around and trying different things with microcontrollers when I need a seven segment display. Very, very nice. And that is how, that's how you set up minimally to run a pickaxe. So we have, uh, like I said before, we have our AXE027 programming cable. In this case, I use the AXE029 programming cable adapter. Your pickaxe chip, a power supply, a breadboard, and a couple of wires, and that's all you need. Of course, you have to download the software as you saw us do there. It is extremely easy to do. It works very quickly and very easily. And uh, the programming cable, uh, as you saw, is, is recognized by Windows 10. I've got Windows 10 on this machine. And uh, I have Windows 11 on another machine. It's also recognized. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed this little uh, tutorial on the pickaxe. And I hope you enjoyed our little project in, in building up this module. The next thing we're going to do in this series is we're going to, uh, we're going to create something similar to this. We'll just build up one of these and you guys can get the PC board from PCBWay and build one up yourself. It's going to be very similarly laid out though. We're going to have a, a, the zip socket to hold a chip and we're going to have these pins here for directly plugging in those three wire modules that you can get very cheaply. And uh, we're, from there we'll take it on a little bit further and build some of our own modules to work with it and we'll have some fun playing around with our little development environment. So this should be handy. Oh, by the way, I should mention that this will this will work with pickaxe uh, 08M2, 08M, oh, so all the 8 series, all the 14 series, and uh, most of the 20 series, I believe, like the, the 20M2, the 20M, and the 20X2, if I'm not mistaken. I'll look all that up, and when we, when we finally build this thing and, and put it together, I'll put a list of everything that it'll work with in the, the description of the video. But that's what we'll be doing next with PCBWay, and we'll look at the design of it in a couple of weeks. So we'll see you for that. Now, one thing I did want to ask um, you guys is I have I have a huge stack of mail over there that needs to be looked at, and I have a, a nice big 
cardboard box from Siglent, which would you rather see first? Uh, the unboxing of the Siglent box or would you like to see the mailbag, the enormous mailbag here, which is probably going to grow <laughs> over the next several days is even more than it already is. So yeah, let me know what you want to do and that's what we'll do. Thanks for coming out. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye now.